All right, last week of our detox rebalancing program. This is the last class. We're going to talk all about sustainability and how to keep the good news flowing. Um, right now, we are at our finale. So far, I've noticed from talking to everybody is that we're sleeping better, we're pooping better, our little aches and pains are gone, we're feeling better in our body. Uh, I lost an inch and a half as of like around my waist as of like three or four days ago. So it must be about two inches now. Same with my boyfriend, uh, but he lost even more inches around his weight, um, around his waist. I'm sure all of you have. Go ahead and check in and see how you're doing with that. I have been getting some compliments. People have been saying, oh, you're glowing. What are you doing? And I've been promoting our detox. So it's been doing great and looking forward to continuing to do this again and keep the good stuff going. I do have more focus, more energy. I'm getting more of my projects done that I want to do. And I feel more alive in my body when I work out. All good news. Uh, so tomorrow we start with one shake. Last day was of uh, two shakes is today. And um, I'm still going to be aiming for more protein in my morning shake. So I'm probably going to be adding more protein in my shake with another protein powder, just because this is my lifestyle that I want to keep going. And I want to have more protein at the beginning of the day. I'll go into an example of uh, food day is oh, right here. It's the same one that's showing up, right? Um, so going forward, this is my basic structure of eating, which can definitely be interchanged out uh, with anything else, but having 30 grams of protein in the morning so that we have some time to digest protein throughout the day, especially being a female, it takes more time to digest protein than a male. And uh, also um, right here, the nut butter has protein in it. And you can see that. So in the morning, I'm having a shake, then I'm having two eggs of any sort. Sometimes we make like an omelet or these little muffin cups that will last throughout the week. We'll meal prep them or just fry two eggs simply. And then three or four ounces of turkey, roughly around 27 grams. Sometimes I have more protein than normal. Sometimes I have the regular amount of protein depending on what I feel like I need to eat. And then lunch, turkey, and then salmon. And that's about 99 grams of protein, which is ideal for me. We say about half your um, body weight and protein. So I'm just going to keep this diet going. And my goal is to really build more muscle as keeping this diet going, not really having the detox herbs in the shake anymore, not until next cleanse, until I clean out my liver again, because there's so many toxins in the world. So we, according to society and research, detoxing your liver at least twice a year is best. We're going to be doing a, a 10 day program, um, detox program within the next, within six months, and then do this one every January. Here is some of our food that we had this week. Maybe you'll be inspired, but for this one, I don't really want you to be inspired. It didn't taste that good. It was really dry. We made it with coconut flour and butter and egg, basically. It was just three ingredients. Wanted to try it. Wasn't that great, but we're going to try another bagel recipe which uh, is gonna add different types of flowers in one. So hopefully that'll turn out better. You know, you win some, you lose some, but you learn along the way every time you lose, so you can do it better the next time. Here's some beet chips and they don't look that great, but they were actually really delicious. They were sweet, salty, crunchy, and um, my stepson hated the smell in the kitchen, but sorry, it tasted really good. <laughs> we also did, uh, kale chips, which are, I love them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I go, I go on these things where I'm going to eat kale chips for like a week and then I'll switch it up. That's just the way I am, but it's really fun to experiment. And if you haven't tried the kale chips yet, I encourage you to do that. Go to farmer and the cook and get their $2 kale in bunches. It's cheaper than anywhere I've ever found. And it's also organic. Uh, here is Zeus, our great Dane. He shredded up our neck heating pad. So I ordered a new one. We got a better one, but just thought I'd give you some updates on the office since uh, he's so adorable. And you see all the little rice he's got in his nose. I think he smelled the rice and it cooking and just wanted to eat it. So now what? We're going to be done in four days. We're going to talk about reintroduction of food and how we're going to do that and what exactly we're subscribing sustaining in our food, the way that we're eating. We're going to talk about net carbs, 
talk about allergies, how to keep detoxing from your environment, what's bothering you, and we're gonna. Our goal is to keep building muscle. Going back to sugar as fuel and fat as fuel. So what we're aiming for is a keto type diet, but it's not strict ketosis, and that's not the goal. It's not sustainable. But when we get energy, when we eat glucose when we eat sugar, when we eat carbs, what happens is our body actually stores it inside our fat cells. And then when we need energy, it pulls it from our fat cells. And this is actually not a smart or efficient way for us to have energy. So as you've seen from this human experiment with your body, you have more stable energy. We don't have these ups and downs sugar spikes now we are running majority of on majority of fat as energy whereas before if you were having more carbs you were running on a more sugar type of energy where you go up and down and our moods also change and it's harder for our body to keep recalibrating to yes sugar no sugar we are not hunter gatherers we can have any food we want so we don't need to be storing sugar in the form of fat. We are not going without food for days. So we don't need to do that. We don't need to store it as fat. So this is the better way to do it is this keto diet. We're not very strict keto, but what happens is keto is our liver makes glucose for us and our liver runs off of fat. End of story. It's a more efficient way of eating. We don't have to stockpile food anymore. We don't have to stockpile that in our bodies and that's just the way it is. So there's two types of way that we get energy from sugar or from fat and we can't do both of these at the same time. So which way do you want to do it? Do you want to store your fat? Do you want to store your sugar in your fat for energy? Or do you want your liver to make it from the fat that you're eating? We're not in the survival of the fittest anymore. We can outgrow these old animalistic ways of, of our body doing it. And we don't need to do that up and down. We can do it with eating more fats. So excess fat is stuck energy inside the cells. And that's what we've been using is really using all the sugar that's been stuck in our fat, which has also been harboring chemicals and also detoxing all of that. Um, so eating fat gives the body permission to burn fat. And we get that nice smooth energy from fat and we call this ketosis and this is more extreme way there's definitely some people that need to be in like extreme ketosis and ketogenic diet and that's because they have certain neurological disorders it's really good for the brain you can avoid this will help you avoid this will help you avoid diabetes heart attacks epilepsy cancer neurological disorders acne acne, hormonal issues. Here are some studies. So some people really avoid this eating, eating high fat because what's the first thing that people say? Well, eating red meat's not good for me. That leads to heart problems. And yes, that can be a problem when you're not eating it organic and it's not grass fed and we didn't treat the cow nicely. We're just eating bad vibes, basically. It's just not going to work out. And also, we're not having the healthy fats, the uns unsaturated fats to balance out the saturated fats. Remember the omega-3 fats were anti-inflammatory and the saturated fats are pro-inflammatory, but we need some inflammation in our body or else there's no circulation, right? We can't just be completely anti-inflammatory and not have any movement going on in our body. Inflammation is movement. If you have any more questions, we could talk about more afterwards. But here's a study just showing that saturated fat is good for you in the right ratios. And the ketogenic diet was made originally for people with neurological disorders and Alzheimer's and help treat people with traumatic brain injuries and strokes. And it works great for them. And we are having an all-time high in Alzheimer's. So just a little reiteration on why we're keeping our carbs low for the rest of our life. <laughs> well, we can, we, 
I'll, I'll go into what we're going to be doing. Uh, well, I will now. So we're going to have right after this 28 day cleanse, we're going to have a relaxed day where we're not always a slave to the kitchen. We're going to eat what we want for a day. It's both of our birthdays, me and my boyfriend. So we're going to just take some time and chill and not really stress about making sure that we're going to find some whole food somewhere because it is a little stressful keeping with all of our jobs, family, dogs, everything, and making sure that we're getting home on time to eat the whole food that we need to eat. It's just really hard to keep this all the time. But now after this 28 days, we reset the baseline so that we can always reset, but we just need to relax on it. So my general rule is like, hey, one day a week, I'm not gonna be so strict on myself if I wanna go out to eat and grab something, great. But if it happens to be two days, I'm not going to freak out either. It's life. I know that I can always come back to this. There's always a safe home for me to recalibrate that I have created and that we have created together. So to avoid this sugar spike, what we need to do when we're eating. So let's say you do want to have pizza. I'm not promote, promoting the pizza, but if you let's say you do want to have the pizza, eat the salad first and then the pizza. And you could see that this spike here is going to be a lot less. It's a lot of work for the body to drag this curb down. And you see, we get this big spike of uh, sugar up and then it drops even lower. It's a lot for the body to recalibrate and adjust. And it actually creates this fight or flight response in the body. And it's just not good for us. Oh, let's see. Keep going. Our body at any point in time, let's say you go get a blood test. We're going to say, hey, we want 100 micrograms of sugar in the blood. That's it. That's it. And that's about two teaspoons of sugar. So what are we doing having a cupcake and a cookie and all that stuff? The body's just constantly having to recalibrate. And this is why we have type 2 diabetes on the rise. The body is naturally programmed to keep your body at 100 micrograms of sugar. If you overeat, we store the sugar as fat. And type 2 diabetes is basically the body's like sick of throwing it, all the sugar into the fat cells. It's sick of doing it. And you broke the enzyme that pushes it in. It's like, we're done. You've done it so much. I'm done. And now we have type 2 diabetes. Fun fact, we have 20 tablespoons of sugar in our muscle cells. And we need 20 grams of carbs a day to live. That's what our brain needs. 20 carbs. That's it. It's not much, right? And if we don't even get, if we don't even eat that sugar, the liver will make it for us. The liver knows how to do that from fat. And the liver holds seven tablespoons of sugar. I'm just showing you how much we really don't need sugar. It's not the fat that makes you fat. It's the sugar. If there's one thing you got out of this cleanse is that you can eat a lot of fat. I mean, not an immense amount, but you can eat, you can eat fat, but you can't eat sugar. It's not the fat that makes you fat. It's the sugar. And it's actually so bad for you because we've overproduced sugar and carbs and has added all these chemical laden chemicals inside the sugar and carbs, which just try exponentially makes the uh, sugars and the fat worse with all the sugars and the carbs worse with all the glyphosates and all the um, dyes and chemicals that we make to keep them sustainable and on the shelf longer. It's just making it terrible. And this is what the U.S. says. This is what they say. This is not what I'm promoting. 65% of calories from carbs. That's not what I'm promoting. This is what the FDA is saying. And look at this chart. It's completely wrong. You can tell by how you're feeling right now that this is completely wrong. Going forward, we're doing, uh, we're working with net carbs. So we want to stay under 100 grams of carbs a day. Now we might have been having about 100 carbs a day. It's up to you if you want to calculate. I know it's a lot of work, but the ideal is 50 to 75 grams of carbs, but you definitely need to stay under 100. And that's in the form of vegetables, I'm not talking about bread, grains, rice, popcorn, all that stuff. Uh, and we're talking about net carbs. So net carbs is the number of carbohydrates subtracting the fiber, and that gives you the net. We're going to go into that again. I know that I said that fast. 
but we're talking about net carbs. So fiber does not count. If you look at this here, fiber does not count as that blood sugar spike. Fiber is a type of carb that actually coats the digestive system and it keeps you healthy on the inside. We're not actually using that as energy, so it doesn't count. So we must take the total carbs minus the fiber. So you see this would give us five net carbs, 10 minus five, five net carbs. And right here it says you must keep your net carbs to 50. That, I mean, I'm telling you from 50, 100, that's what I want you to go to. 50, you don't absorb um, fibers into the blood or anything like that. So we're trying to keep it 50 to 100. Here's some examples for you. So broccoli, this is a whole head of broccoli. You're gonna take 10 grams and you minus the 3.8 and this gives you 6.2. Cool. Now here is the apple. 25 carbs minus the 4.4, you have 19 grams of sugar. And again, we're, we're going from 50 to 100 and making sure the total net carbs is in that range. Because now you're going to start wanting to eat carbs after this. So this is why I'm really pushing this point of, hey, you can have a little bit more carbs, but let's make sure that we're counting and not going way overboard and coming back to normal. And this is another ratio. So I said we want to stay on, you want to go to 50 to 100 carbs, right? Now, in any one serving, you could take the carbs and divide it by the number of fiber and you get a number. And I want this number to be less than five. If it's less than five, you're not going to get a blood sugar spike. So you can see when you're searching for bread, this bread is going to give you a nice blood sugar, not a nice, it's going to give you a blood sugar spike. But this one is, is going to be le easier on your body and you're not going to have this uh, fight or flight response where it's like, I need to get the blood sugar back to normal because the, the body loves to have the 100 micrograms in the blood. It wants to keep it stable. And if you're throwing it off all the time, body has to do a lot of work to get it back to normal. So I made this little saying, stick with five and remain alive, <laughs> which is fun. So if, whenever you're looking at carbs and you want to have pasta and you're doing this ratio and you get to like, let's say you get some bean pasta, which is a great alternative, but it does have a lot of carbs. You'll be like, oh, this is having a lot of carbs. So I need to add a ton of spinach to my bean pasta in order to boost the fiber. And then you could take this carbohydrate and divide it by the number of fiber, which you just exponentially increased by buying frozen spinach at the grocery store and then putting that in your pasta which i also recommend buying frozen spinach and adding it to your foods just because the spinach always wilts and it's a lot it still holds the nutrients in the spinach and it's a lot less cheaper to get it frozen and if you do that add that to your pasta now you've just increased your fiber and you're not going to get as much of a sugar spike even though you did have some pasta which was great And I already said this, that eating fat keeps the body out of stress. That is a danger zone when we go up and down with the sugar. Now, I talked about sugar and how many grams of sugar and carbs you should have in a day, um, which they're the same thing, basically, is what we are calculating. They are the same thing. But for fat, you want the amount of fat to be your ideal body weight, which is about the, the amount of servings that we're having, which I think was about four servings right? I kept it to four. Four servings of fat. That's what you need. Medium chain fats. So these are the type of fats that um, they really bypass your liver. Your liver doesn't even have to produce uh, energy. And these fats are straight up energy for your body. That's why we really like them. The grass-fed butter, coconut butter olive oil, grass-fed cheeses, pasture-raised raised eggs, and grass-fed beef. So these are the ones that you're going to get straight energy. So if you're looking for a boost in energy, you can have some of these fats and it'll get you going. And that's what ketosis is really based off of. These are fat-soluble vitamins. So there's a reason why we're having so much fat. It's not a ridiculous amount of fat, but why we're having more fats than, than sugar is because there's a lot of nutrients um, in fat, and that's how these vitamins are absorbed in our body. These are the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K. So 
friendly reminder for healthy hacking, avoid alcohol, walk about 10K steps a day, lift weights at least, oh, life weights, lift weights about three times a week, get seven to eight hours of sleep, lemon water over snacking. Yes to whole foods, no to junk foods. Be patient with yourself. We're always making changes. We're always making improvements. There's always new information that's coming out. So, and then also supplement with anything that um, you're deficient in or it's great to always have a multivitamin because uh, it's very easy to fall into a deficiency and not realizing it. And we'll go into more later. Food intolerances. So we're going to be welcoming back in some foods. But I really want to talk about allergies and adverse reactions to food. Now, there's two types of allergies. There's the short-term and long-term. So the short-term is more of hives. Immediately, you're going to throw it up or have diarrhea, um, a bunch of other symptoms. But you're going to know right away that you're allergic to something. And you probably already know what you're allergic to. But then we also have this long-term food intolerance, which takes days, weeks later. And we call this the IgG antibody, where, where real allergies are IgE. But with long-term food allergies, it's really hard to tell um, based on our body's intuition that and our body signals that we're having an allergy to something because it takes so long. Nobody's like, okay, I eat a piece of cheese. And then three days later, they're like, oh, it was that piece of cheese three days ago. That's really hard, right? But we're gonna go into talking, we're gonna talk about uh, more about that. These are the most common food allergies. Peanuts, other nuts, fish, shellfish, eggs, milk, wheat, soy. And you might have a feeling that you're might be a little intolerant to some of these and we are our body gets allergic to these just because of the way that it's manufactured and what's inside of them and the body is not really allergic to these foods our body is allergic to what has been processed on the food do you understand what i'm saying i want i kind of want to say that again it's like our body is not allergic to food like we weren't born naturally allergic to something, and some people are, right? But then there's other types. There are definitely things that we are born with, but then there's other types where we became allergic to things because of what the world has put into the food. And it's our body's natural response to say, I don't want that food, and it associates it with that food. And that's a lot to do with the long-term allergy response, which takes up to three days. So what you can do is we're gonna introduce new foods. Let's say you wanna add uh, wheat pasta back into your life. You can eat that food within two days, but then don't introduce any new foods for three days. We have to take this slow. And you're gonna keep a journal or just write down in the morning how you're feeling and what's going on in your body. Really get in tune, take time. And it should be in three days before you introduce another food. And I would even, if you're suspicious about having this type of allergy, the long-term allergy, I would even wait a longer time. It takes the body time to react. Um, and if you start feeling adverse reactions, what we say is we eliminate that food for three months and we do a restore, a restoration of our gut. And then we go back to eating the food and that's how, but that's a, a different topic to talk about. But this is just in general what we need to do. And unfortunately, our body craves the food that we are allergic to. We crave the food that's actually not good for us sometimes. That's just the way that we are built. If you're afraid that you might be lactose intolerant, stay away from more of the softer cheeses because they tend to have more lactose. These are some of the IgG long, um, more the long term takes up to three days to get an allergic reaction. These are some of the symptoms you might feel. A weird tongue, hoarseness, itchy palate, tonsils, sore throat, swelling, eczema, swelling, skin, rashes, um, irregular heartbeat, vasculitis, the little um, like spider veins on your legs, ADHD, depression, forgetfulness, insomnia, migraines, Behavioral problems, mood swings, things like that, burping, constipation, 
farting, weight gain, bloating, and just pain in the stomach. Look for all of these things. You're going to notice that you're different because you've been eating so clean for uh, clean for a while. This is a test, the IgG food map test. This is done through Mosaic Diagnostics. It's an easy test. It's about a hundred bucks. Gets back in a couple weeks, and it tells us how uh, not IgG, not short-term allergy, but long-term allergy, and it tells you exactly what your body's throwing a fit about. And then we could steer clear and around these. It's uh, so if you really, if you feel like you fall in this category, you can order it with me and we can go ahead and do that. You can just email me. We really want to avoid gluten and all these top, top allergen foods. We can avoid them. You want to avoid them because that's what triggered the allergen in the first place is because of what um, we have put into the food in order to make more money, right? And it's really that sugar spike that people keep craving for that, oh, it feels so good to have sugar, but then afterwards I feel like crap. We, it's all of that stuff. It keeps us coming back for more, but it's not actually st stability and good for us. You can have them, but slowly introduce them, please, and make sure you're not over consuming them. Make sure you're having cruciferous vegetables. Just because we're not on a detox doesn't mean that your body still doesn't want to support its liver. I don't recommend taking this detox shake for life, like for the rest of the year. Your body's just going to get used to it. And it's not going to detox your liver when you want it to detox. But you might have some extra detox powder. Make sure you're using it up by the end of this cleanse. It depends on how big of a heaping scoop you did. Again, no food after 7 p.m., veggies first, carbs last. Stay away from juices. Don't add sugar to your oatmeal. Look, make sure you're not getting this yogurt that's added with um, strawberry, which is not even real strawberry. It's just sugar and coloring, things like that. Watch out for that. Really stay away from the cans and go for real food. Even though I know that some canned things are good, just really check the labels and make sure there's no bad oil. Going forward, your diet is complex and rich. These are the two words I want to etch in your brain. When you say, hey, what is your diet like? I want you to tell me it's complex and rich. That sounds like a great life, right? And your body wants that too. Rich and nice fats that really uh, saturate your body, deliver nutrients to your cells, and give you sustainable energy that's not up and down, not craving for more, naturally rich in flavor. And that's what fat does complex, rich and complex. And I'm going to talk about the complexity. Your body loves diversity. It loves all the colors of the rainbow. It likes trying new herbs and foods. So when you go to the grocery store next, I want you to grab something you've never tried before, some weird root. I want you to take it and cook with it and try it because your body loves diversity. And when we have this diversity, in our gut flora, it's like we have the postman, the lawyer, we have um, the police officer, we have the judge. It's like we have all of these different types of people on our side. And we need our community. We need a diverse and people. Like I need an accountant. I need to help with my website. I need a computer person, right? And this is the same thing with our gut. It needs this diversity and it needs all these different types of people in the form of bacteria and being able to keep this as complex. It's like having a, um, a luscious jungle with all these different ecosystems going on inside of it. And you want your body to live like that. And here is the color gut. This was made by Dr. Deanna Mitch. And I love following her blog and reading all the good stuff that she posts. And this is all the different colors and how it affects your body. And she does, um, if you email me, I'll send you this. If you want to do another challenge, it's um, this challenge is 50 different plant-based foods in seven days. So it's a seven-day challenge where you're trying to eat all different types of foods. So um, if you just email me this, 
and ask for it, I will send it to you. But really it's, um, hey, how many spices can you add to your food? How many different things can you add to your smoothie? How many different types of vegetables can you add to your, your bowl of food? Right? And it just really helps. I have to say salt is not the enemy. Salt is not the enemy. I don't want to go into the details of everything. Just really trust me. Salt is not your enemy. If you're going to have salt, just make sure it's not deionized. We want the deiodine. We, we want the iodine in the salt. Go for pink salt. Go for black salt. Not for, Generally not the white salt. Supplements everybody should be taking is a fish oil, collagen, and a multivitamin, and a D. These are the most general supplements that I recommend for people. But before a multivitamin, we have to make sure you don't have any deficiencies. And then we switch over to a multivitamin just to really make sure we're getting that variety, that complexity. Because sometimes your body runs into a bug and it's like, I need to, use, uh, like, let's say you run into a cold and it's like, I need to use all of my zinc in my body to fight off this cold. And now you did that, but now you don't have any zinc in your body. So it's good to have a multivitamin around and to keep taking that. The fish oil, because you should be having five to seven food uh, servings of fish a week, which is insane. So, and really hard to sustain for life. So just having a fish oil and having that and just popping one in your mouth in the morning when you didn't have fish the night before, great recommendation. Collagen for your joints, because I know everybody's not drinking bone broth or not eating the cartilage at the end of a chicken. So collagen is great for your joints and long lasting and vitamin D or D3, which we can talk about later. Uh, there are some bad supplements out there. A lot of the supplements are made with rocks and chemicals and they're just really bad for you and really bad for your liver. I think it should be some sort of something that you go to jail for that because it's absolutely ridiculous we should not be eating these types of things so i recommend whole food supplements and that's what i have here even whole food companies that i have teamed up with have turned their back on being whole foods trying to make more money and i have exited out of them and gone to better supplement companies so you can honestly trust me when i'm going to give you the right type of supplement that's good for your body the thing is whole food supplements actually food in a pill it looks grainy your body understands what that is it's it's way too simple for me to go into details about it it's like hey back to the basics eat simple food right we could have skipped all of these lectures all these talks and i could have just said eat eat whole foods it could be that simple right but things got so complex and we made it so hard. But going back to nature, our body recognizes these natural compounds. So I'm gonna skip over this and I'm actually gonna email you guys with a good list of toxins to avoid to make sure that you're not uh, putting all these toxins back in your body. I'm gonna email you guys after this. So and all of that stuff, just to make sure that you're not running into it again. And if you haven't been exercising as much as you want to, I encourage you to do that. You have a great basis of eating and now it's you can build upon that, build upon that with muscle. So we clean our, our clean out our liver gallbladder two times a year. I welcome you to join me. Um, it's gonna be 10 days, not the 28 days, but I'm definitely gonna do another 28 day in January with everybody. Life happens, it's not gonna be perfect. We want it to be perfect, but it happens. And then we're gonna come back to normal together. If you're feeling any pain in your body, I do recommend this Omega Index tracking where we can go ahead. It's under, I think it's 75 bucks, 75, $80. It takes a, two weeks and we get to see where you are on this chart with the healthy fats. You can get misconstrued. And I have seen people come into me with this under 4% and it's like alarming, alarming. We need to change a lot of stuff in order to get it back to this high. We want, we want 11, 12%. And a lot of people fall in this middle ground here. It'd be nice for everybody to see where they are and how they can improve even more. And just to make sure that we're headed in the right direction and we're not doing something that we don't know about. It's nice to measure with something like this. So if you're, I, I'm assuming a lot of your symptoms have gone away, the aches, the pains, not feeling comfortable in your body, the mood. I say right now, my conclusion is about 65% of the time, nutrition heals everything. 
And at my practice, we go with this healing of triad of healing the nutrition, the physical body, and then the emotional body. And that all these come together to give you health and vitality. And that's why I love doing this nutritional program because 65% of the time, in my opinion, thus far, nutrition heals everything. Thank you so much for joining me and great job. I congratulate all of you and I'm really excited to see you guys thrive and see you inspire other people to also thrive inside of their bodies, which is of utmost importance just for our community and for the world at large. It means so much and that we can effectively make change, hopefully in the FDA and governmental levels to give us our rights back in terms of eating the right way and stop promoting all this other crap. So I'm going to be, I'm going to, I love doing these talks. So I'm going to be, um, I'm not gonna be doing these live, but I'm going to be doing a new talk every week on YouTube. So you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel and just giving these nice updates. I'm also going to be emailing all of you with uh, just to see how you're doing, see if you can give me um, a little feedback and a little review on how you're feeling. And I'll also be sending out a list, list of toxins so that you can avoid toxins in your environment since they are everywhere. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording.